Hey up. I want you to have a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. A jolly Easter. Or St. Patrick's Day comes in between New Year. Actually, yeah, so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Hope you really enjoyed Burns Night, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, um, Midsummer Night. Uh, yeah, and every festival that we have throughout the year. Because they're all a lot of fun, aren't they? Yeah. And I'm going to bring some fun into the proceedings now. I'm going to sing a little song. This one's called... Um, Ding dong, merrily, on high. And it goes like this. Ding dong, merrily, on high. In heaven the bells are ringing. I'll skip that bit. We'll just go straight to the chorus. Gloria Hosanna in excelsis you probably recognize that one. One of my favorite carols of all time is Silent Night, and I shall do it now. Here goes, Silent Night. You get it? <laughs> so, as well as singing a few little songs for you, hello, Mark. I'm also going to be doing um, some anecdotes. This is coffee. And really, I've got a problem with Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You know, apparently it was written by a man called Robert Southey, originally. And it was three bears but it wasn't a mummy and a daddy and a baby and just before i move go on let's talk about this baby bear right all babies have a gender why hasn't baby bear got one like what is baby bear boy girl or something else we don't know we just don't know and we're never told but I assume it's a boy. Everyone I talk to assumes that Baby Bear's a boy. But why? It doesn't say he's a boy. It's like the whole, you know, who says Humpty Dumpty's an egg thing. Anyway, originally it was just three bears, three male bears. And again, this, this, this obnoxious girl who was deserving of a stint in the House of Correction, apparently, um came into the bear's house and was obnoxious. Now there's another problem. What are bears doing living in a house? Bears don't live in houses, okay? We don't. They certainly probably wouldn't cook porridge in bowls. They wouldn't have chairs to sit on. They wouldn't have um, beds, clearly. Anyway, so I'm gonna flip the story around. So like, it's, it's like, it's not the way it happened. This is the way it really happened. Once upon a time, there was a family and they lived on the edge of the woods. The woods could be a dangerous place so they didn't often go in the woods but they stayed on the edge of the woods especially when the mum of this family made porridge too hot which was every day. And whenever she made porridge too hot, which was every day, she would 
insist that the entire family went for a walk to let the porridge cool down. Now, okay, they, they didn't have to go for a walk. They could have done a million other things, but they decided to go for a walk. And they left the door open, obviously. Because along came a bear. Right, we'll do a break there and do a bit of a song. Um, there's a lot of Christmas songs out. There's carols, obviously, which are more traditional. Although they only go back so many years. Prior to that, God knows what people did. But anyway. Then we have things like um, Slade. Um, Noddy Holder. Uh, Noddy Holder and the Slade. And the hit song went like this. Are you hanging up your stocking on your wall? Something, something that rhymes with war. So here it is, Merry Christmas, everybody's having fun. You get the idea. So, Mommy, Daddy, and the girl, because it is a girl, with golden hair and a sort of a blue dress, pale blue dress, and they had gone for a walk. Not in the woods, just on the edge of the woods. You see, the woods are quite dangerous because there's bears in there, obviously. Anyway. <sighs> Bear comes up to the house. Gates open, doors open. What would you do? You just go in, obviously. There's a table in the kitchen because you go straight into the kitchen. It's not like, you know, there's a hallway or anything like that. It's a fairly modest sort of a house. I mean, they're not wealthy people. I mean, they live on the edge of the woods, for God's sake. And like, Bear, no name, just Bear, comes in, sees this big bowl of porridge, tries it, but he doesn't like it. Not whether it's too hot, too sweet, too whatever, he doesn't bloody like it. So he moves on to the next one, and he doesn't like that. And then he goes on to the last bowl of porridge on the table, which is a little bit smaller than the others, and it's just right. It is absolutely just right. So he eats it, obviously. <sighs> now, having eaten his fill, he wants to, I'd say he, sit. So, Tries to climb into the big chair, yeah. Tries to climb into the next chair, yeah. Gets into the other chair, but it breaks. It just it just shatters into pieces on the floor. So the bear's now gone. Mm, I need me nap. I need my nap. So he says, "I wonder what's up here." So he goes up the stairs, tries a bed, too big. Tries another bed, no good. Gets into this little bed, which is obviously a girl's bed because the, you know, the coverings are all pale blue you know the color for girls you know it's fascinating this 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 whole pink for girls and blue for boys thing is a fairly recent addition to our culture and society it was around about the time of uh, well, around about 100 years ago pink was actually a masculine color and blue was a girl's color so there and clearly black is the colour for Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, how about another Christmas song? Here it is, Merry Christmas, everybody's having fun. Oh, here's a good one. <clears throat> Deck the halls with boughs of holly. La 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 Deck the bastard who stole my money La 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 Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose, and if you even saw... So, the bear 
boy bear. Naked boy bear. A bear bear fell asleep in the bed. Now you know what's going to happen next, right? You know. And it's true. It happens. The dad. Does he have a beard? Yes, he does. Joe. Charles Dickens, who's, who's kind of like very fit, he, he had a version of, of the three bears. And in his version of it, it wasn't bears at all, it was hobgoblins. Hobgoblins. I mean, what? The, whoa. I don't know what I'd rather face hobgoblins or bears. Hmm. Probably neither, but anyway. They noticed nothing wrong walking up to the house because you know they left the gate open, they left the door on, but they noticed something wrong when they got to the kitchen table and sat down to start tucking into the porridge because the dad could see that someone or something had been trying to eat his porridge. And of course he says, someone has been eating, no, I, 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 what sort of an accent has he got, right? Someone has been eating my porridge unless hey someone's been eating me porridge yeah i think that sounds a bit better you know you can't beat a fake liverpool accent mummy bloody hell really you do a thing like that wow someone's been eating my porridge as well and the kid. Where's me fucking porridge? So it's only a few seconds before the dad sees that someone's been sat in his chair. Who's been sat in me fucking chair, mum? Who's been sat in my fucking chair? Goldilocks. Look at me fucking chair! Who the fuck's done that? Obviously, they now go upstairs. Now, do they all live in one room with three beds? And why don't they, the mum and dad, share a bed? Do they not, like, is there some marital problems there or what? Like, anyway, the point is, the dad's able to stand there and go, Who's been sleeping in me fucking bed? And the man goes. And who's been sleeping in my fucking bed? And of course Goldilocks just goes. Oh, 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 fucking, I'm a, a fucking bed in me bed. There's a fucking bed in me bed. Now I don't know about you. But if any member of my family was yelling about a bear being in the bed I would not be going in that room I'd be going right get out of there get out of there quick I'd be closing the door hoping that the bear didn't know how to open the door I'd lock it if there was a lock point is I would not <coughs> excuse me coffee time Ding dong, merrily on high. Oh, I've done that one. <clears throat> no, I haven't. Ding dong, merrily on high. In heaven, a bell is ringing. My bell's over there. Oh. Ding dong, merrily on high. In heaven, the bell is ringing. Anyway, skip to the chorus. That's the good bit. Gloria Hosanna in excelsis. And then you do it all again. It's a great song. Of course.
Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw him, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeers were a load of bullying bastards. Anyway, with all the noise, the bear wakes up. Now, in the story, in fact, the original story, it wasn't even a little girl. It was an old woman who ran away and was never seen again. If she was never seen again, who's telling the story of the three bears? Because, like, bears can't talk. If the woman or Goldilocks was never seen again, how does anyone know the story? Anyway, my version of the story, the bear wakes up, sees these screaming people, and immediately thinks it's being attacked. Now, how do you... You know, what's the bear strategy in a situation like this? Because there's a big one, there's a medium-sized one, and there's a little one. Go for the little one, the big one gets you. Go for the medium one, the little one and the big one get you. He goes for the big one. Tears out the father's throat, kills him on the spot. Mother's screaming, kills the mother, kills the girl, eats some of them. Obviously, because, you know, it's a bear. And they're semi carnivorous. What's the word for something that's both? I don't know. Can't remember. Carnivorous is a meat eater. Vegetarians. Carnitarian. Vegivorous. And whatever, anyway. The bear kills them. Because um, it's a bear. <laughs> and it leaves the house. See, because this is the other thing. I mean, if, if it was three bears. What would they be doing in a house? Bears live in a cave, I think. And it couldn't be winter either, because obviously because bears hibernate. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed my little Christmas treat. Um, I hope the Scientology operative, whose job it is to look at all my videos, really enjoyed this one, because it was done especially for you. Uh, of course, here's the thing, Scientologists actually, you know, they, they get all Christmassy. In fact, they, they were getting really Christmassy in Dublin at the end of November, um, which is a bit much really, because Christmas doesn't really start till about December the 8th. But anyway, they don't believe in Christmas. I mean, L. Ron Hubbard said in one of his lectures, there was no Christ. Oh, really? He says there wasn't a Christ, that the, the idea of Christ is just implanted. Um, 276 million years ago during the uh, the Xenu incident shall we call it and they have a basically this implants called R6 the implants called R6 so they should be celebrating r 6 not Christmas when I say they I mean Scientology and Scientologists so happy r 6 all you Scientologists stop pretending to be human and enjoy Christmas and trees and presents and things because we know you're not that's a bit harsh but you know, come on. You know that as a Scientologist, human emotion and reaction is frowned upon, so you try not to have any. And human emotion and reaction, actually, and here's the contradiction, in addition to containing all the negative emotions, would have to include the positive emotions too, because it's human emotion and reaction. Didn't see that one, did you? Anyway, fuck that shit. I'm off. Happy Christmas, everybody. I'm going to have a wonderful time with my family. Bye.